Salinity stress is one of the major environmental factors that reduces global crop yields. And by 2050 it's been estimated that up to as much as 50% of all arable land is going to be salines. And this issue is only going to increase with climate change and it's particularly bad in third world countries, so in Africa and in large parts of the Middle East and Asia. The large parts of South Africa are semi-arid, which means that there's already a high concentration of salt within the soil due to the erosion of the natural rock over time. So in order to combat this, the first thing we need to do is generate crops that are capable of tolerating higher degrees of salt stress. Most crop plants don't uh, tolerate salt because salt basically imposes two different types of stress on plants. The one is because the concentration of salts in the soil exceeds the concentration of salts inside the plant, the plant struggles to take up water. But then there's also a very specific salt component to the stress. So the plants take up sodium ions because they look like potassium, which is a major plant nutrient, but those sodium ions are toxic to the plant. Our research group is currently trying to identify genes involved in salt stress tolerance. So we compared the transcriptional response to water stress to the response to salt stress to identify salt specific genes. Arabidopsis is kind of a small European weed but everything is known about its genome and proteome. The entire thing is sequenced so it's widely used as the model organism by all researchers in plant science. So the idea for us is to try and identify the genes and molecular mechanisms involved in salt stress tolerance in this plant and then to look if similar things are also happening in agriculturally important crops within the South African context. We've found an auxin biosynthesis gene that is specifically upregulated in response to salt. We found that when we manipulate the expression of that gene we can improve salt tolerance. And from there we aim to show that this model plant that is genetically modified is more salt tolerant and the next step then is to try and identify similar genes or molecular processes in the crop plants, maize and sorghum, and then to see if manipulating those genes in the same way will also cause those plants to be salt tolerant. So we're targeting maize and sorghum because they're the major cereal crops in Africa. Typically people plant sorghum when nothing else will grow because it's such a resilient crop. One of the difficulties associated with our work is uh, just the time it takes to generate genetically modified plant lines. Moreover, another difficulty that we face is a lack of funding and a lack of access to certain equipment that we need for our research. Fortunately, within the context of a greater collaborative organization such as ICGEB, we are able to send samples to Trieste for proteomics analysis. That's been very advantageous for us. ICGEB is a collaboration effort of scientists throughout the world. It's an intergovernmental organization that's made up of the three components in 66 member states and its mandate is to improve research excellence, training and technology transfer to the developing world. The work that we're doing at the ICGEB Cape Town is completely in line with the Sustainable Development Goal 2, Zero Hunger, of the UN Agenda 2030. If we are successful and we understand salt tolerance in Arabidopsis thaliana and we find that we can translate our findings to African crops like maize and sorghum, we would be able to grow maize and sorghum with higher yields in African environments. We should hopefully be able to generate crops that are better able to grow in saline soils and therefore provide better food security for peoples in these contexts.